Hello there! This is DBT and these are the rooms. And alright, let's continue playing some more Asphalt 9. And today I'm gonna be driving my Lamborghini Asterion in multiplayer at four stars to determine how far can it take me? Oh yeah, it's finally time to do this with the Asterion because this is a car that is very common in the game. But does that mean it's terrible? We're here to find that out. So as usual, I'm gonna be playing in classic series and I'm gonna show you that I'm sort of at the start of the gold league and this is precisely on purpose to see well from the moment that I get to use this car when I get to gold league just how far will it take me now in case you're curious about the the placement of this car it really is towards the lower end of gold or class B rather so it should make it into a very bad car but if we look at the stats of the car well first of all when it comes to upgrades I have it with quote unquote gold acceleration maxed out thanks to a couple of epics that I got in the Revolto event. Other than that, I got no epics because the epics for this car are ridiculously impossible to get. They're nowhere to be found. So I only have those and I applied them on acceleration, but that only increased acceleration by like one point. So that should kind of give you an idea of the performance of this thing. So without further ado, let's try it out. Now, if you enjoy my content, why don't you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. You know that I post literally daily on this channel. So there's always something to watch over here. Even if it's not this game, but there's always something to watch. So come on. And if you have other ideas for what cars I could bring into the How Far Can It Take Me series, then go ahead and suggest it. If I have the car, I'll use it. Um, I have more cars on the Switch version, but you know, the Switch version is kind of different in the sense that normally most people are just farming. So it's relatively easy to get W's over there. It's weird. It's a weird situation. So that is why I do very few uh, videos like this on the Switch, even though I have more cars over there. However, once Unite comes comes in, comes uh, appears, shows up, whatever, you know, Asphalt Legends Unite, the sort of expansion slash conversion for this game, we're going to have crossplay. Oh, that guy was just, just went through me. That's cool. Um, once crossplay happens, that means that on the Switch, I will still be able to be matched against just about anybody from any platform, including people like here in Android. So that should make it more possible for me to play with those cars um, that I have on the Switch and test them out and see, well, how do they perform? So yeah, that, that'll open the window, but that's still a few months away. But you know what? On my very first race, it's gonna be a W. Let's go, bud, bud! Um, now, to be fair, I was racing mostly against Class C, I believe, because again, I was at the very start of the Gold League, so you tend to encounter a lot of Class C cars, yeah. C, 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 no, 370 C in this month. Uh, D, C, C, and C. All right, well, yeah, unsurprisingly, I got a very good result. Despite of some cars actually having a higher rank, in general, by this being Class B, it performs a little bit better, sort of, kind of, maybe. And I just realized that I didn't actually do a breakdown of, of the stats. The top speed is on the, okay, speed for Class B. Nothing amazing, nothing terrible either. It's okay, especially for a four-star car. Acceleration of 80 without the epics, it's pretty acceptable. I think it's the like the baseline for when it's pretty decent acceleration. Handling is on the low side and Nitro is very good. So there you go. Now, when I say that the Nitro is very good, I mean, it's not a king level Nitro, but it's still, I would say, above average, probably. I think uh, when you're approaching 70 Nitro, it's when the cars are like, oh yeah, this is really reliable Nitro. Anyway, for this race, I already see some very strong class B cars. I saw Huracan, there's the W12. I also saw the 48A Challenge Evo. So yeah, from this point onwards is where the Asterion is really gonna have to prove its worth, I suppose, because um, this is gonna get difficult. Why is this race not, not starting? Jesus. Okay, there we go, it started eventually. So, Huracan, Apollo N. The Apollo N may do all right, but it's not necessarily gonna do amazing because in spite of being a very fast car, you know, it doesn't have the best acceleration, it doesn't drift very well. And speaking of drift, how does this car drift? Not great, not great either. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Again, let's remember, let's keep in mind that this is the, the car that pretty much everybody will acquire over time. Uh, so long as you're doing your daily tasks. But because, you know, you get blueprints to... Oh, I'm so sorry, buddy. I was just 316. Minding my own business. We're fine. And um, that wasn't panic. That was me yodeling because sometimes I enjoy yodeling as I fly through the sky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, this is a, a very common car that a lot of people are going to get. And to be completely honest, in spite of being a low-class B car, I still consider this car to be surprisingly good. Like I said, acceleration, pretty decent. Top speed, 
pretty decent. Nitro, pretty decent. So again, probably the weakest parts are gonna be the the um, handling and the drift. But hey, so long as you use your Nitro smartly, you should be able to get out of a lot of turns without needing to drift. So just keep your speed and you'll be doing all right. Listen, third place, what beat me? Uh, 48 Challenge Shibo and the W12 Coupe, very strong class B cars. But I did beat two Hurricanes and an Apollo N. All of this was class B. All of this, high tier, mid and high tier class B. So, I count this as a total W, absolutely. Now, me saying that the car is pretty decent overall doesn't mean that you're gonna beat every single car constantly or anything. Getting a third place with this car, considering what I was faced against, I think was a pretty good result. But for example, over here, I don't know how I'm gonna do. I see a bunch of Corvettes, I see an Invincible, lovely car, lovely car. There's the same Apollo in that I knocked down, sorry buddy, wasn't trying to. Um, so yeah, I do expect some meddling results. And obviously, again, being a low class B means that you're gonna be able to do okay precisely in the low uh, gold league. If you start really getting some points going on in the higher side of, of, of gold league, then you're gonna be encountering a lot more players that are gonna be driving much stronger cars. So yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a problem for your car. But again, it's just a matter of managing your expectations as to what are you gonna be able to do and trying to not get frustrated by people winning um, by virtue of using better cars or maybe even driving better. Because let's, let's not forget, all right? A lot of people love to point out that, oh, he only beat me because he was driving a much better car. Yes. And <laughs> Sometimes the skill also has to do like that guy, for example, and I'm not trying to criticize that particular guy, but he's running a better car, yet he crashed. So at the end of the day, there's multiplayer, it's a little bit of everything. It's a lot of luck, it's a lot of the car performance, it's a lot of your own performance, it's how you avoid being in precarious situations. You know, I've talked to, ooh, what was that guy doing going in the opposite direction? Uh, sometimes it's just like, ah, oh, there's a bunch of people, I'm gonna move away so that they don't knock me down, type of situation. So, I don't know, it's, it varies a lot. Um, defeated by a 2 Grand Sport and a Super Legera, again, high to mid Class B, but I did beat the Invencible, two Corvettes that were, by the way, um, what's it called, Overclock and the Apollo N. The Apollo N should have done better over here, to be completely honest. I mean, simply because uh, this track really lends itself for some top speed areas, but oh well. Now, why am I here in this screen again? Well, it's to show you one of the things that Asphalt 9 has that I really like, and yet, it's a very, very underused um, feature over here. You see my steering like this, but now it looks like this. Holy mother, that's right, body kits. This game has body kits, but the reason why I said that it's a very underused feature is because there's really only a minority of cars that have body kits. But when you have them, look at this thing. Looks absolutely bonkers. Even with the little wing and oh man, does this look though like the like the steering anymore? Maybe a little bit, but not too much. This is gonna make me faster too, by the way. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Of course, it doesn't affect the performance of the cars. It's just visuals. But it's still, man, look at, it, it's so cool. For example, look at this Hurricane versus that Hurricane. The Hurricane does have a little bit of body kit swell. So this is one feature that is super, super, super dope, but really it's an, a fraction of the cars in this game that have the body kits. And I understand that that's a lot of work to create the body kits. Um, also, I suppose, get you know in the license when when they license the car also for the, the the owners of the license to agree to have body kits for for the car and whatnot so i can see how that's not super easy to do but man this is such a cool feature and unfortunately a lot of the cars that have body kits tend to be on the bad side of cars they tend to be old cars i guess it's a feature from the olden days and after at some point i don't think that they've added any body kits since quite a while back. The last one that I remember is precisely when they did the body kits for the, I think it was for the Hurricane, maybe, oh no, for the Aventador Super Veloce, they did body kits for that thing. Um, but yeah, in general, it's been a long time since, they've, since they have added them, and it's just sad because it legit is such a cool little feature to make your car look absolutely crazy with the body kits and all of that. You can already customize the car very nicely with the colors, but then on top of that, adding the body kits, it just makes, each car to look a little bit more different than each other, you know, of all the people that are driving. Mother fluffer! I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, but yeah, look at my drift. Oh man, sixth place, just like that, because that dude pushed me on the wrong side, and I couldn't keep my speed going. Fine, whatever. Um, I think every car in this race are considerably stronger Class B cars, so I'm not too surprised to, to be getting left behind. Besides, this is a twisted track, and like I said, this car may be able to do some things here and there. 
but one thing that it cannot do is do very well in a hyper twisted track like this because it doesn't drift and you definitely need the drift in a bunch of corners around here but it's fine i did beat someone though um actually technically two people a grand sport and a uh, lambo hurricane i did get beaten by three more hurricanes and an invincibly it's funny because the hurricane doesn't drift great either but still it's it accelerates like crazy so it helps a lot in twisted tracks man these multiplayers have been so bad lately jesus so yeah, at the end of the day, it really is going to depend on, or rather, the, 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 your results in the races are going to depend a lot on who you're facing, which track you're playing on, and yeah, basically that's it. And of course, again, of course, your skill, but that, that is a given no matter what car you're drive, driving. But I guess what I just said, it really applies for every single car out there. But my point is that this car being a not particularly amazing car in Class B, well, you're just gonna have to rely a little bit on luck in in order to get a track that benefits your car, or rather, it doesn't, you know, affect it too negatively too much. That's that's basically what it is. But like I said, actually, the top speed on this car, it's not too bad. I think it's even a little bit faster than the Corvette Grand Sport. Now, granted, the Corvette Grand Sport does a whole lot of things much better than this car, but I'm just using this as a little bit of an idea for you to know that. While, again, it's not the best car out here, um, it's not straight up terrible, so, and considering that it's a free car that literally everybody is going to get so long as, again, you do the, your daily missions and all of that stuff, um, yeah, I think it's a pretty good guaranteed car in Class B where you're gonna be able to have some fun, oh, Jesus Christ, well, hey, listen, he didn't knock me down, he didn't 360, so I appreciate him for that, and considering that this is somewhat twisted track, there's still a considerable re result. All right, I got beaten by three Grand Sports. Unsurprising, because these cars are fantastic at the drift and all of that stuff, even if they don't have good acceleration. I did beat a Super Legera, pretty much fully upgraded. Same thing for a Evo Spider and two Mitsubishi Lancers. Okay, well, all right. They're actually still racing. What? I, I don't get it, but it's fine. So if you're wondering, should I get this car, DBT? The answer is yes. Simply because it's free, you know. Doesn't cost you anything to get it. It takes a relatively long time to, to get all of the blueprints to take it to four stars but again it's just a side quest basically you get the blueprints by just doing the daily daily missions which are not really all that difficult like play three multiplayer races uh play three special event races uh play three races any three races which automatically gets done so long as you do any of the other two uh upgrade a car uh apply an import part uh get packs from the store you know it's really and packs from the store you can literally get them from ads on android and ios so there's that um so yeah all of these missions are ridiculously easy to get to play three daily events as well so yeah it's very easy to get all of these missions done so yeah eventually you will get this car at first you get a bunch of blueprints every time that you do the the, the missions daily uh once you unlock the car the amount of blueprints you get are less per day that you do all of the missions but like i said it's just a thing of doing it daily and before you know it while well, you're focusing on other cars you already unlocked this thing you already started up and you'll be fine again not nothing amazing nothing amazing this isn't gonna be oh this is gonna take me into what's it called platinum league no it probably won't or maybe it will if you're a great player but yeah and that's why i say tame the expectations and you can have a good time for example me getting a second place i got defeated by a hurricane Evo, but i did bit a grand sport vantage gt12 grand sport uh there's another asterion look at that uh lambo hurricane and another grand sport so yeah i'm telling you it is a fun car it is usable there's no Ooh, i'll watch that yeah and by the way remember i asked you to give me some suggestions i listen to the suggestion i read the suggestion though in this month in particular, not exclusively, but I'm going to focus quite a bit on Lamborghini because this is the month of Lamborghini, in case you don't know. This is the month in which Ferruccio Lamborghini was born. So to me, this is the the Lambo month. That's why I'm doing an Asphalt 8, uh, what I call the run of the bulls. I already made one precisely in Asphalt 9, but whatever. Where I play multiplayer exclusively with Lambos, things like that. So yeah, I'm not only going to focus on Lambo this month, I'm still going to do other things as well. But, you know, for the foreseeable next um episodes of this series there's probably gonna be some lambo some increased lambo focus over here so there you go um but yeah so it's an okay car that's all i can say it's an okay car especially for being free and it is not as bad as well as one may think it is not great and especially if you like dvt do some really dumb stuff in the race oh someone got knocked down r.i.p to that dude 
Oh, that's um, that's interesting. I want to drive that car as well. The Arasha's Fly 8. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, buddy. C come on. Why did you jump right? You saw that I was 316 on every single jump. You shouldn't have you shouldn't have gotten close to me. This is what I was saying earlier. There is definitely a bunch of people that are very toxic on the knockdowns, but there's also some situation in which players put themselves under a dangerous position, you know? Like right there, it's like the guy saw that I was 316 all over uh, in the jumps. It's like, well, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should go on the other side of the ramps to not get close to this dude. So yeah, there's a little bit of self-care that you need to take, you know, in order to, what's up, sir? So what's that? So yes, that's kind of how I look at it. So what happened there? All right, so I got beaten by the Lamborghini Huracan 2911 GT3 RS. Jesus, this car is really good. Huracan Evo, but I did beat a Huracan Evo, and there's the Arash As Fly F, Arash As Flight 8 Falcon Edition. I want to try that car at some of the point, but I need to upgrade it. It's fine. It'll be fine. So yeah, okay, car. It'll do all right. Don't expect anything super amazing with it, but it's still pretty fun to drive. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.